Hello, Kriks is here and welcome everyone to this week's video. Today I will be chatting about my entire watercolor collection. It's not only what you can see up here, I have much much more. And I thought this could be interesting if you like when people chat about watercolors, this is the right video. I will be also swatching some of the colors which I haven't swatched on my YouTube channel and show you them up here as well. Grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or any drink. I have, um, you can see like peeking out. Um, this is a Clippers Deek of uh, Black L Grey Tea. Yes. <laughs> okay, anyways, and I also have just lit up a candle on the side to make this super cozy video. So I thought I will start by showing you all the two paints I have from watercolors. I have them in these two baskets. This is uh, all the Wallis and Seymour vintage watercolors up here. And uh, this is just all the manufactured brands, not manufactured, like bigger watercolor brands, the, the regular classic ones. And uh, I also have this little dog, which um, one of you suggested name Rex. And I actually like that name. So I will call him Rex or uh, Rexis. In Latvian, it's the same. <laughs> and I also got recently this one in Art Trade. Um, from Agatha, she's, uh, this is also the box she sent to me, this is Keramikon, and I sent one of my original artworks to her, and she made this herself, and it's so cute, and um, now I will have two mini guardians in the video, so this will be called Ash, um, I just, I don't know, I like the name Ash, so I think this will be Ash, and this is Rexis or Rex. <laughs> Anyways, I will show you all the Wallis and Seymour paints. If I'm not wrong, I think I have 18 now. And uh, I really like this little box up here. It's actually filled also with uh, some dot paints. And uh, I keep... <laughs> like, these dot paints, these are from Deep Deep Light. And... Um, I just wanted to save these for, for myself. I might like put them in the pants. Sometimes you can just easily peel and just put it somewhere else. I also keep these ones. I really like them. Like, you know, when you got, um, especially when you got handmade paints, uh, they're wrapped with these papers. And I just, I don't know, I like it. Um, so I kept them. I have... Um, Deep Deep Light, I see colors, also one A Gallo. And uh, yeah, they are in this little box as well. Maybe I should put them all on a frame and just frame them or something like that. But anyways, so these are the paints. I'm gonna tell the names and put them on the side. And I might do zoom in. So I have Eglinton Green Art. Then I have Hornister Green Slate Pale. Then there is uh, Paints Grey Original. I got this color super recently because uh, Natasha sent me a dot and I really liked it. So I was like, I'm just gonna get another one myself as well. So this one is here. Then we have Lapis Ashes Paint Tube. Then we have uh, Prussian Blue. Then there is Bohemian Green Art Genuine and um, Green Art Light. Uh, this is also a new one, Verdaccio. I think that's how you say it. I will swatch it out later on in this video as well as um, another color, which is new to me. Um, then there is Davies Grey Oxford Mudstone and um, Moton Whetstone. Sasso Rosso is the new color as well, and I will swatch it a little bit later on. Then there is Borders Red, um, Leighton Red Ochre, Radstone Natural Iron Clay Ochre, Burn Sienna Bagnoli Monte Amiata, uh, Caput Mortum Moreol Morellone, and uh, Mermaid's Egg. 
and uh, Gustave Dor Maroon. So these are all the colors I have from Wallis and Seymour. I will, I will try to write everything down below, all the names. It might be like a lot, but I will try to do my best. Okay, so this is the second basket and this is filled with different brands. I also have uh, a dot cards from um, Anne C. She sent this one to me to try. And I have Born Sienna dot in one of the color palettes I'm using, but these are also the ones I could use in the future. I have, uh, I might like put them up here. <laughs> I actually don't have that many two paints. I don't have like a lot. You probably, if you have a lot of watercolors in your collection, you probably have much more. So these are the two paints I have from bigger brands. I have two American Journey paints. Uh, these were gifts uh, from my course mate and uh, she lives in America. So I'm not sure if this is possible to get in the UK, but this is a Prussian blue green shade and this is Coastal Fog. I really love this color. And then I have three Van Gogh colors. This is a gift from one of my Patreons. These are from, I think, subscription box. And I have Rembrandt, which is also from a Royal Talents brand. I think Rembrandt is uh, considered to be a little bit higher quality than Van Gogh. Um, I have four Daniel Smith paints. I have Buff Titanium. Uh, then I have Rau Sienna. This tiny one. <laughs> It's almost over. This is um, this is raw amber violet, and then I have smaller one of lunar black. I will show you all of these two paints in the color palettes because this is not where like I'm not using two paints as they are. I'm squeezing them into pans and then using for color palettes. Um, I also this is also recent purchase. I wanted to try Shire yellow. Schmink Hordem super granulating watercolor and I never had schmink like in natural paints. So I was like, I don't know, it's like really interesting shape. The, the, the cap looks really stable, like really strong and sturdy because sometimes, especially I remember when I used oil paints, some of the caps, they were a little loose and... Uh, it was easy to break them and yeah, this looks really sturdy. And then I have four Holbein watercolors. This is uh, light ultramarine. I have shadow green, amber and Mars yellow. And now let's go to the palette themselves. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have like this little etcher um, tin, which is uh, from Keramic Palette. I am storing these little pans because all the paint tubes I have, I just squeeze them in here and I have a little bit left. So I have like this Derwent tin, which is also a gift from one of my Patreons. I have so many gifts from Patreon. This is uh, from Kerry and uh, she sent me this one and I'm storing the paints. I don't have in any other color palette. So this is not a color palette. This is like a storing place, so to say. And there is like two levels, which I found really handy. And uh, yeah, these are the colors. Um, this, these here underneath layer, this is my first, these are my first professional watercolors. I bought them in 2012, I think, or 11. And these are White Nights. Um, I think like the quality has changed over time and now... I think the brand from Nevskaya Pelitra, they are not so great quality, but back then it was super good. So yeah, these are quite bright colors and there is missing one row because I'm actually using some of the colors for my sketchbook work. But the only colors I'm using, can you guess? They're air tones <laughs> and super muted and moody colors. So these brighter ones just stay here. I'm not sure what I will do with them for this moment. And then in here, I am storing kind of a bit of everything, I would say. 
two years ago, almost two years ago, I received the Choosing Keeping uh, gift uh, from 1930. This is Kuretake set, but it's empty because I am actually using these paints right now. And uh, some of them are here. Some of them are in other color, color palette, which I will show you in a second. Um, there are some which are gifted as well. And uh, I have Rembrandt, two Rembrandt colors here. There are two colors which are from the paint tubes, Van Gogh. Um, then there are three um, colors which I mixed myself, kind of uh, from different tube paints together uh, to see what colors are there. I have two handmade colors here because they didn't fit in my color palette. These are two blue colors. I have one a yellow color and one which is called forest. I have four Daniel Smith paints up here. I have a um, gift queen gold, I think that's the name, and uh, little two paints from from this one which I just showed you. And uh, yeah, I will try to link actually some of the places where I swatch the colors, but I will not show you the swatches from this one because this is just kind of like leftover paint storage <laughs> space, so to say. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this is, uh, this is a gift actually as well uh, from almost two years ago. And this is uh, also from Choosing Keeping. This is Kuretak, I think, uh, pearl set. And these are super shiny paints. And as you know, I don't use a lot of shiny paints. Almost never. I think since I got them, I used them twice. And you can see a little bit where I use them. But yeah, they're not the paint I gra like gravitate towards. I might kind of use them in Christmas cards or something like that. So I'm not like getting rid of them. I think they're still great to use um, as a challenge or for something super specific. So yeah, these are up here. Okay, I think let's move on to this one. This is my sketchbook palette and this is the these are the colors I'm using in my sketchbook work. I decided to use them in my sketchbook work because I wasn't sure about the light fastness uh, of these paints and uh, I will just show you. This is actually the the, the first uh, professional watercolors. This is the packaging how it came. This is like they came in the plastic box and I wanted to keep this one and it just brings me a lot of memories from that times. And uh, beforehand there was like a plastic which was separating 24 colors. And over the years that plastic, it was becoming loose and it also started to crack. So I just throw that plastic away and then I had like a lot of space. And uh, now I put like the color palette and I actually used double sided tape to stick them. So they, they just stay where they are and they don't move, which is something I don't like when, when paints just move all over the place. And because this is plastic, I couldn't use magnets to fix them. So yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, supposed to be for paintbrush, I think. And there's a lot of mixing space, which is really nice. But yeah, so these big ones, these are the Kuretake paints and some of them are from the 1930s set. You can see these bigger ones. These are the colors up there. And uh, there are also some paints which I mixed myself. So this is mixed myself like this in the second row, the first one. Then I have White Nights. So these bigger ones are for one, from White Nights and they're much more muted tones. And um, there is also these smaller ones. These are the ones I mixed myself, like the half pants. And these are White Nights and this is Kuretake and these are mixed myself. I think this is black one also from White Nights. So yeah, I felt like this is such a nice color palette. And I have used this palette since I created it. And I feel that the Kuretake, they granulate beautifully on mol moleskin paper, which is really nice. 
And yeah, I think what is also great, like for sketchbooks, if you want to work much, much looser, it's really great to have bigger pants because then you can grab bigger brush. Whereas if you grab big brush, it's really hard to take paint from half pants. So yeah, I try to kind of vary it, but this is, this is my sketchbook palette. And these are all the colors from the sketchbook palette. Okay, <laughs> where should we... Okay, let's go to, to this one. So for this one, you probably... Wait, I will put the ash up here and Rex up here. So you, so you probably have seen this color palette before. I have a video, I will link it down below as well, where I created this color palette. This is supposed to be for traveling and I will use it when I will go to Latvia or... Yeah, if I will want to go outside and sketch something. I think this is really light and there it's quite tiny. It is just it sits on top of a palm like that. I took out some of the colors because I had um, cadmium yellow and cobalt green or something like that and I don't want to use those kind of paints in my work anymore so less toxic the better. So this is another paint palette. Okay, so I will be showing you this one. This is the newest palette I have created and it's not complete. So just imagine this being filled. But this is my only um, kind of regular brand watercolor palette. And uh, these are the colors. So there is Daniel Smith Burn Buff Titanium. Then there is Coastal Fog American Journey uh, Van Gogh Red Ochre Yellow Ochre. Then Mars Orange. And then there is Schminke Potter's Pink and uh, Indian Red, as well as Holbein um, Amber. I think this is a, a random gray, uh, 2022. And this is a lunar black. Then I have Roman Schmal Prussian blue. I think this is Mayan blue dark uh, by Daniel Smith. This is Lapis Lazuli by Daniel Smith. Um, Shadow Green by Holbein. And this is Shire Yellow by Schminke. And yeah, this is... Uh, I, I want to complete it, but there is no rush. So I will just slowly complete it. But I want to, whenever I want to try new things and uh, experiment, I really want to not only use handmade paints in my work, but also use different brands. Because for now, my main palette consists only of handmade paints. So this is kind of alternative version. If I didn't have handmade paints, this would be it, <laughs> so to say. So yeah, this would be my regular brand palette. But now let's go to most used color palette. The most used color palette. Yes, so this is my main watercolor palette. There is stickers from my shop and then there is Natasha's Newton sticker. I might fill it up even more. I like to add a personal details. Um, but yeah, this is... It's, it's not uh, clean. <laughs> I, I'm warning you if you like clean palettes. I'm regularly using it. So I'm cleaning sometimes before I use it. And um, I'm I'm gonna put this one up here so you can see. Wait. Let's do like that. So this, this is the color chart. And uh, let me know if you want to see the separate video where I will swatch all of these colors because a lot of things have changed since I shared you this palette. And now it's completely full and filled with all these beautiful colors. And honestly, I'm so happy how it looks. I'm, I'm just, this is my favorite palette because I just love all the colors and I put them myself. And uh, there are, I think, six different brands, but all of them are either handmade or vintage. So I have Wallace and Seymour vintage watercolors, the ones in the tubes. I filled a lot of them inside here. I also have AC colors here, um, deep, deep light, 
Beyond the Indigo, Enrico's Paints. Um, I think, is that it? There is one more brand, but it's in different palette, I guess. But yeah, these are, I just love them. <laughs> Honestly, I love them in their own way. And uh, a lot of them are similar. I think there is nothing wrong with having similar paints. If you like them and if you use them a lot. Um, I think like the most used colors, um, it's Marmite's Egg. I think I refilled this, uh, the first one in the middle two times already. Um, I think also I really enjoy um, Ericus paints and just these pants. But yeah, it's hard to like divide. I also like Molten Whetstone, which is a kind of pink brown color. I I wasn't sure if I would love it, but when I, I started using it, I have been using it a lot. So yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on to another color palette. Okay, so this is kind of like one sort of color palette, but I have, so I have like three different color palettes, but it all makes sense together. So I will show you them almost at the same time. So this is a um, AC wooden box I got uh, from AC Handmade Colors and it's so beautiful and I just really wanted to make this color palette special. So these are the colors and uh, this is how it looks in swatched version. No, I think this is how it looks in swatched version. And this is called Muddy Mist. I put the color palette myself the other day and I was like, I'm, I'm so happy how it looks. Um, there are a lot of different brands. I actually recently got quartz handmade paint. I decided to take a mystery, mystery bag and uh, there, there were some imperfect paints and some of the paints that didn't have any name. So that's why there is kind of, it's, it's tricky to to know what is what because some of them are either experiments she made or something she wasn't happy in the end. But yeah, I have like Wallis and Seymour paints here. I have AC colors, I have Deep Deep Light and also Quartz Creations. And I also have uh, this little one and this is Autumn color palette. This reminds me of Autumn leaves. And uh, these are, I think I forgot to mention, these are all handmade watercolors. Because like, even though I have like my main watercolor palette, which is all of handmade watercolors, I have much more, I think I have much more handmade watercolors than regular ones, to be honest. But yeah, there is also quartz creation, AC colors and uh, Wallis and Seymour. And then the last one is called Rainforest. And there is also Wallis and Seymour, AC and Quartz Creation colors. And all of them, like, they make sense being used separately, but also they make sense when I lay out everything. And I think if I will miss something from this color palette, I can just take something from here and put it up there or mix and match. So yeah. <laughs> These are my watercolor paint palettes and I think I showed you everything I have. I decided to swatch some of the colors which I got recently so you know what kind of colors I have now and I will just uh, swatch them in simple simple shapes so it's not a lot of pressure and uh, <laughs> yeah I think like they will not be perfect which I think it's all right. I am using uh, Princeton Aqua Lead brushes. These are my favorite ones. I really love them. And the paper, it's, uh, I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> it's from my watercolor paper folder. It's from the times where I didn't name the papers I had. I just used them and that's all. So yeah, but... <laughs> This is the Shire Yellow from Schmieke Horodam. And honestly, when I was uh, watching it online being swatched, it looked much more yellowish, whereas now it looks much more greenish. So, yeah, 
that's that. Okay, the next color I want to swatch, it's uh, from... It's from this autumn palette and there will be some paints which are not named because they are kind of like um, mixed versions and I got them from Quartz Handmade Watercolors. So the next paint is uh, also from Quartz, but this is called Burn Tumber, so I know the name. <laughs> this was like a dot card, actually. She sent me some dot cards, and I realized I could just put this one into pan. So this is... I literally broke the dot card into pan. It's a good hack. If you like the dot, you can just always use it as a pan. So this is really reddish brown color, really pretty. Okay, so the next color is uh, Sasso Rosso, and it's also in this autumn palette. Um, but yeah, it's uh, from Wallis and Seymour. As I told you before, I'm this is like mix of different watercolors, mostly handmade. But yeah. This is, I need to add a little bit of water to reactivate it. So it's easier to show you how it looks. I'm starting to use like more pink colors. And this is, it's such a beautiful pinkish tone, but it's not bright. So I think I love pinks when they're super dusty or super like muted. <laughs> or connect like uh, to, they're mixed together with brown then I love them because look at this color color it's so lovely and uh, I wasn't sure how it will look because um, I have Moton Whetstone which I thought is similar but this is actually more pinkish whereas Moton Whetstone is more brownish and they differ by quite a bit which is really interesting. I will also swatch some of the muddy mist colors, the ones who are in this color palette. And uh, there are also some quartz paints up here as well.
I want to also show you Verdaccio. This is the paint I got recently from Wallace and Seymour and it's in this color palette. But the funny thing about Verdaccio is it's... Uh, I, I bought it like two weeks ago and it's still wet in my palette. It hasn't dried. I don't know what is the formulation of this paint, why it happens, but it's still wet. And um, I was actually, I'm, I'm sending dot cards to Natasha for her to try. And this paint, like it wasn't dried when I sent it to her. And it took ages, absolutely ages to dry. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why it's only for this one. Because other Wallace and Seymour paints, well, a lot of them dry super stone, cold, like hard. And some of them dry when it's easy to reactivate, but this one is just still wet. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what's that about. Okay, so there is one more color. I think I missed this one. Yes, there is. Um, I think this is there is like name for this. Uh, this is quartz as well. This is uh, Rebula, Rebula, something like that. And I I tried to find it on the website. I couldn't. Maybe it's out of stock. So by the time I will upload the video, if I will manage to find the name, I will mention it. It started so small and now it came super big. Well... I guess it's fine. Okay, I just remembered. I haven't shared you, but I bought one extra paint from AC Colors and it's Indan Tan Blue. I really wanted to try it and use it as, a, as an alternative to the blue I have from Wallace and Seymour, the Prussian blue. And it's such a lovely tone that I actually have been using it in some of my work, I think like I am a fan of uh, dark, vibrant blues, and because I love Prussian blue, this was. I think this is like a great alternative. This is PB sixty, if I'm correct. And <laughs> now this color stands out, but I think that's also in the illustrations. When you add this color, it definitely stands out. And it's super visible. And I think I accidentally splattered it and there is like blue in, in one of the swatching blobs. Wait, can I take it? Yeah, I took it out. <laughs> okay, I think I will let this to dry and I will add the names and I will be right back. Okay, so the paints are finally dry and this is how my newest paints look. Uh, this is Schmink Shire Yellow, then we have Quartz, numbered one, there's Burnt Amber, which actually looks quite reddish in this swatch. Um, then I have Rebula paint by Quartz, uh, Wallace and Seymour Verdaccio and Essie in Dantern Blue. So yeah, this is how it looks, but I also have bigger swatch for you to show. I swatched all of my handmade watercolor paints I have currently in my collection and um, <laughs> I ended up with so many swatches so this is these are how they look I will be scanning both of them and I will be uploading the high resolution file to all of my patreons so if you really want to see how they look join my patreon I hope in this video you can see approximate color tones I think in the beginning I really was swatching them by colors and I ended up here, but then I added more colors on top. So now it's not in the order. I might actually cut with the scissors all these swatches and put them in like order. And yeah, I think like this will be super useful reference because currently I'm painting for a book and I will self-publish it. And uh, these are two my new... Two of my newest illustrations. I really like working on these artworks. 
And I'm mostly using uh, handmade watercolors. You might also notice from my entire collection that uh, handmade watercolors dominate other ones. And uh, yeah, I think it's great that I have so many so I can kind of find similar. And in that book, I actually want to have some color swatches. So yeah, this will be super useful when it comes to that moment. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this uh, week's video. If you stay till the end, please write in the comments down below, Lapis Ashes. Um, this is the paint color from Wilson Seymour. So I know you stayed till the end. I also want to say thank you so, so much to all of my lovely Patreons who are supporting me over there. I really appreciate everyone over there and also everyone over here and... Uh, it brings me a lot of joy that someone is like watching these videos and they find these videos calm and cozy. Thank you for watching and I will see you super soon. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.